Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And I wanted to point out that we are about to be lucky enough to see a splendid sight. The Ferry Building beckoning visitors in lights, just as it did in 1915 when it welcomed them from all over the world to the Panama Pacific International Exposition. But beautiful as this fairy tower is going to be, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the revolution in lighting that took place on the north side of the waterfront at the fair, where lighting designer Walter Darcy Ryan planned effects so innovative that many said that they could not be done. But Ryan succeeded beyond imagination and changed the course of lighting history. The first thing he did was create tall light standards hung with beautiful banners that concealed groups of lights and these lovely structures had nothing to do with this streetcar. <laughs> However, they did conceal groups of spotlights that were able to wash the palaces of the exposition with smooth, even light uh, that we today would consider flood lighting. But before 1915, it simply hadn't been done on any scale. Hundreds of smaller spotlights that were hidden on the roofs of buildings, each pointed at an individual flag or piece of sculpture, making them appear to glow magically. So even though these techniques were not as stunning as his light shows, they have become our standard lighting repertoire. But oh, his light shows. First of all was the electric kaleidoscope, which shone from within the 150 foot diameter glass dome of the Palace of Horticulture. The device beamed lights through a series of revolving bars, screens, and glass discs, projecting patterns onto the dome from the inside and making it appear like an iridescent 15-story glittering opal. A virtual sunset in gradients from crimson to sapphire rotated smoothly across its surface, then comets and planets spun about in swinging orbits, changing color and finally dissolving into fluttering spots of lights that evoked birds and butterflies. Next was the astonishing Tower of Jewels. At 43 stories tall in the center of the fair, it dominated the skyline stepping back in seven tiers like an enormous layer cake encrusted with columns and statuary. But it was Ryan that gave it its name by dusting it with 102,000 large Austrian cut glass gems in candy colors like a sugar coating of precious jewels. So um, Ryan called them Nova gems and today they are rare collectibles. And at night, the tower was hit with many colored spotlights and the swinging Nova gems made it look as though a million fireflies had alighted upon it. Now, you may have noticed my apparel and wondered about that. And I'm wearing this because I just came from my time machine where I gathered this from the Tower of Jewels. No one's going to miss just one from the 102,000, right? So lastly, Ryan invented the Great Scintillator. This was an animated fan of rainbow-colored lights that projected into the sky and fog above the exposition. A pier near the yacht harbor supported 48 four-foot diameter spotlights, each mounted so that it had freedom of ro rotation in all directions. 60 marines were required to make the light swing and dance through patterns with names like the devil's fan, fairy feathers, and my favorite, the fighting serpents and octopus. One magazine said, quote, on receiving a color command, an apparently wild scramble ensues, but in five seconds, the screens are in place, the lamps train to position, and behold, the aurora. Now, tonight, thanks to Tad Toby, Donna Ewald Huggins, Jim Phelan, and many, many more, we will again behold the wonder of illumination art in our fair city 
a centennial later. Thank you very much.